And I guess a question I'd like to kick to our UK guests is how on earth do you start to close Pandora's box? How, what are some current processes for detecting online extremist content? Uh, what challenges are you facing when trying to remove such content? And Arthur, why don't you go first and then Oliver? Sure, yeah, uh, it's a big question. <laughs> I guess um, maybe I could talk in a bit more detail about what we're doing to challenge it and the kind of rationale behind our approach. And then I could talk to a couple of other approaches. Um, in fact, I'll talk about three things. So the R terrorist content analytics platform, uh, basically the methodology of that is to focus on the core of these kind of terrorist networks and how they're spreading the content online. So as as Kat said, you know, a lot of this content is actually happening within the communities and less so outside of them. Um, so that's our kind of approach is to focus on those communities. And as I said at the start of my presentation, also um, they're often on on platforms that are either struggling to to moderate this or potentially are unwilling to. And I'll talk about those two things separately as well. Um, but our, the TCAP essentially what we're doing is we're using open source intelligence to track this content and alert it to the platforms every day. And to help them to kind of identify it and usually when they receive an alert it will have an explanation of what the content is which is a, it's crucial as well. Limitation to that um, is that we uh, essentially our inclusion policy is based on designation lists. We look at the major democracies um, for designation which is quite clear for Islamist terrorism but you know famously for the for the far right it's um, much less um, uh, what's the word? M much less kind of c comprehensive, for sure. So um, that's a real challenge. Um, and obviously, the limitations are there is that we, we can't we can't catch everything. We're only a small organisation. Other solutions, as I mentioned, kind of automated solutions. You know, hash sharing is one um, that is you know very effective for um, things like Islamic State videos across social media. Um, a limitation with that, as I said in my presentation, is that. Um, that has to capture like exact copies. So the hash is like a unique code that identifies the material. With memes, by their definition, they're constantly edited and changed, and they're always different when they're uploaded. So that makes detecting it much more difficult from a, from a kind of automatic point of view. Third thing I'll say, and then I'll pass it over, um, is you know we're focusing a lot on infrastructure providers. I talked about platforms that are struggling to moderate content, but there are also platforms that are either terrorists themselves or kind of supportive of or completely ambivalent to it. Um, that really poses a challenge for us. Um, we're focusing on what we call terrorist operated websites, i.e. websites that are operated by terrorist actors. Um, and at that point, you need to start talking about infrastructure level um, action. Um, but that kind of raises its own legal challenges. Anyway, I'll stop there, pass over to someone else. Go ahead, Oliver. Yeah, thank, thank you, Arthur. So from, uh, from Moonshot's perspective, two key ways really where we try and address some of the threat not just of memes but of domestic violent extremism more broadly the first of those is our insights work and our insights portfolio so really helping our stakeholders like the threat bulletin that i mentioned a moment ago really understand the nature of the threat i think in order to in order to in order to decide how to intervene in order to understand how to direct resources to to kind of counter the nature of the threat we first need to understand what that threat is that's what the threat bulletin is all about we kind of have we have uh, we have customers uh, uh, fusion centers and their customers on the federal level as well in the us helping them understand these threats and how these threats manifest so that they can direct their resources more effectively on the on the other side uh, moonshot also undertakes lots of lots of intervention work Everything we've spoken about today is online. Memes are an inherently an online thing, online object. And because those memes are online, it means there's a, or it implies there's a massive opportunity for online targeted interventions as well. So whereas previously in the sector, obviously, you know, 10, 20 years ago, it was all offline interventions. Now I think it's really important to bring those interventions online to try and target people in the same kinds of spaces that they're finding these memes online. Um, to try to offer them credible cred credible counter messaging to try to take them away from these memes and towards more positive forms of content. 